Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with the bestie Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie Jessica. All right, so it is that time of the week. It is time for us to do our one minute book recs where we go over all the books that we read in the past week with one minute synopsis of each book. You ready? Yes. But first? But first, we have mm -hmm. some housekeeping to take care of. Yeah. So you definitely want to hit that subscribe button because you want these calorie books. They mm -hmm. are amazing. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And also you're going to want to tune in on Thursday when we have our calorie read interview up. So make sure you go watch that as well. So hit that subscribe button, like and comment and follow us over on Instagram. A few other housekeeping things to tell you about. As you guys know, we are doing author interviews now and our hope <laughs> is to change our Thursday format just a little bit. So Thursdays will continue to do the convincing series and that'll be every other Thursday. And then on those other th Thursdays, we're gonna be having some author interviews. So in the comments below, who are some authors that you would really love to see us interview? You already know we have Calorie coming up and we have Pam Godwin, which I'm super excited about. I have some things to talk to her about one as a promise. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I will try I to keep I, myself under control. <laughs> I'm dying for that interview because I'm waiting for Manny to be like, all right, let's talk. <laughs> well, I'm going to be like, let's do talk to Alaska. Mandy's going to be like, so one is a promise. <laughs> what was that? What, what's the point there? <laughs> yes. Explain yeah. yourself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so who are some authors that you would like to see us mm -hmm. interview? Put those in the comments below. Are you excited about author interviews? Do you like the Convincing Us to we Read are. series? Tell us all the thoughts below. Is there is there a trope you're wanting us to hit on that we haven't? Comment below. And we are we like to throw out bonus videos, as you guys know. So we also will have some bonus videos coming as well. And then, you know, Monday's one minute book recs and Saturdays will continue to be tropes and different things like that. So lots of fun stuff happening on our channel. But just let us know what you think, because while we really enjoy doing this, we want to make sure that we're putting out content that you guys want to see as well. Tell me about your reading week. Now, wait, I also have to say, are we still friends? Because you were pushing me to read a book. So we're going to have to talk about that, right? Oh, yeah. I've been pushing you. I really wanted you to read a book, but then I think I'm just going to take it back. <laughs> okay. So we'll talk about that. But other than that, how was your reading week? Okay. So I read eight books this week. But five were part of a series that, like, you have to read, you know, each one in order. So I will have four things to talk, four books to talk about. Okay, that works out. Because I read, oh, shoot, I just added it out, too. <laughs> Actually, while you were thinking, I was like, oh, adding, and then it didn't. Yeah, okay, so one, two, three, four. Good Lord. I read seven books this week. But one of them is for a video that we have coming up, so we can't talk about it because it's a surprise. And then the other one that we're not really going to talk about, I'll talk about right here, but we're not going to like talk about the one minute book recs was the first roughly 60% of Cage and Ice and Echoes by Pam Godwin, which is the second book in her Frozen Fate series, which is the Alaska series. And so she's not finished writing it. So I got the first half and it was... I mean, it was a good chunk. It wasn't huge because I thought I'd just seen somewhere where she messaged us and said it'd be like a thousand pages. Um, this was three-ish, but it's only like the first half of the book. So it should be a decent size. And then we're supposed to, I'm supposed to get the rest coming up. So I completed what I was given of that book, but I didn't finish the book technically. So, you know, I just got to say, guys, it's out for pre-order. Go pre-order it. It's wow. I'm just wow, blown away. All right, Weird. let's let's do this. So, do you have the time already? I do. Okay, perfect. All right, ready? Go, go. All right. So, my first book is Slasher Pass, and this is by Taylor Page. So, this is a series of books that she's written that are based on horror movies, which I hate horror movies, but this book worked for me. Um, so this is about Isley, and then Kansas and um, Constantine are her 
um, her heroes of her book. So this is an MFM. And when they're little, so Isley is kidnapped by a cult at the age of six, and she is kept captive for five years in this basement type room with these two boys who are exactly the same age. When she's 11, she is brought out of the room right after she gets her period. And the preacher guy is like, yep, it's time. And so they, they bring all three kids into this ritual like setting and she has to choose one to be her husband to marry and they perform the ceremony right, right then and there. The other one that she doesn't choose will be killed and sacrificed. And so when all this happens after the ceremony, um, the little boy, one of the little boys makes a, um, a distraction and they get away her and, and the one that she didn't choose, the, the one that she married, put his ring around her neck on a chain and said, you know, go, I'll save you. And then we fast forward um, 10 years later or whatever. Thank you. 10 years later. And he, uh, she sees this kid. They think he's dead. She sees him on the, on the TV and he's like, I'm back for my wife. So, cause they're doing a documentary on what happened with the, the cult. So um, it was really mm. good. Five stars. I really loved it. I'm dying to get it. This one, I think this one is based off of Scream because the guys wore the Scream masks a lot in it. So I think it's based off Scream. I don't know what the next one's going to be based off of, but I'm here. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that one, but I, I'm, I'm, I want to start. I want to read it this week. So we'll see. Okay. Okay. All right. So tell me about your first book. Is this All the right. one? What? Is this the one? No. It's okay. The, I put it at the end since I like read all the other books. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, well, it was at the end. Never mind. Okay. My first read of the week was Forever Right Now by Emma Scott. So we have Darlene, who is a recovering addict. She's been clean for about three years. She lives in New York and she comes home and gets the, it's not you, it's me. We're breaking up speech. Sorry. And so she's had another failed relationship. And so she just decides it's time for her to start over. So she moves to San Francisco, like clear across the country. And here she already has a sponsor set up and she has a place to live. And she's going to live in this, like, uh, I picture like the full house house when I was reading this. But the first floor is an apartment. The second floor is another apartment. And then the third floor is like a studio apartment. And that's where she is going to be living. And on that second floor is Sawyer, who is studying to be a lawyer, and his little girl that she's, I don't even think she's a year old at this time, or maybe just over a year. Oh, that is my timer already. <laughs> and he has, so he is a single dad, and he's trying to become a lawyer. He's about to pass the bar exam, or attempt to take the bar exam, and he's trying for a federal clerkship when his little girl Olivia's grandparents show up and decide to fight him for custody. And so Darlene and him in this time have grown close and there's maybe something trying to happen between the two of them. And then Darlene has this past. And so how is that going to impact Sawyer's ability to try and keep custody of his daughter? And what does that mean for their future? loved this book. Solid five stars. I've really been enjoying Emma Scott lately. You know what I like? Hmm. So your lawyer. Yeah. They make that joke in there a few times. Yeah. <laughs> I almost did when we were recording the video for our end of like our March wrap up. You said it. Yeah. I was trying to chuckle too hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So my next book is one that I've wanted to read for a while People have brought it up a few times. I really like this author. And so I grabbed the book. It's a start to a series, but let's, let's talk about it. Okay. Okay. Do I switch myself? I need to switch myself. Good God, Jessica. Okay. Anyhow. So I read Allison's Adventures in Underland by C.M. Stunick. And um, this one was interesting. I mean, it's, it's a take on Alice in Wonderland, but it's a reverse harem. So like, you know, going into it, it's going to be a little crazy. And, oh, crazy it was. I think there's like three or four books in this series. And the beginning, Alice is a teenage girl. She's in high school and she has a crush on a guy. She goes to a party and the white rabbit pops up and shoots the guy, kills the guy that she has a crush on that she's talking to. And then she follows the white rabbit into Underland where she meets 
two guys that are supposed to represent Tweedledum and Tweedledee, but one says drink me, one says eat me, and yes, yes, it is what you're thinking. And um, it was it was crazy. This thing was crazy. It was crazy. Um, I gave it four stars for what it was. I'm not going to continue on though because it turns out there's like I don't know six, seven, eight guys. There's too many. Like everybody she meets wants her, and I don't like. While I enjoyed the book. You know what's crazy going into it because it's it's Wonderland, right? Like you know what's going to be nuts, but why her? And I understand like they did they describe it as there's been like a curse or something that was put on all the guys or all the women in Wonderland, and so a lot of the women turned into men, and so there's like no women, there's barely any women, and there's all these guys, so they're cool with being in a harem. I, it, it was a lot too much. I kind of got a little lost on who was who. And I like Sam Stunick a lot, but this was too much. I couldn't. It was a little, it was a little too crazy. Like, I like the book. I gave the book four stars. It was a little too crazy. It just got a little too crazy. It was cool, but it was a little too crazy. So we'll oh see. Maybe I'll gosh. continue later. I don't know. But right now, I was like, uh, it's a little much. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, so. Jessica, so last week, I read an Omega verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This week, I read an alien book. I'm so proud, and I saw what it was. <laughs> Did you? Because it's, it's okay. I gotta I gotta know what you think about it because, yeah, I gotta know. Okay, so I read, so I read choose what? Sorry, oh. I almost clicked on myself, but yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I read <laughs> Choosing Theo by Victoria Adeline. So we have uh, this has been recommended a few times. Some people have suggested I read mm -hmm. this. And I think you did a convincing once where this was one of my options yeah. as well. Yeah. So we have Jade, who's living life on Earth, <laughs> and she's kidnapped by aliens. She doesn't, like, they are not aware that aliens or any of these things exist, but there's, like, this whole other world, not even world, like, multiple worlds out there that, like, everyone on Earth is just kind of oblivious to. So Jade gets dropped at this planet and she is walking towards civilization she hopes where she is discovered by some people that live there and it turns out she's on a planet that does things very differently than our planet and she happens to end up there <laughs> during the selection for husbands and so they tell her that she cannot leave the planet for like a year and so she is going to have to pick a husband to marry and live with him for the first three months of her year. But on this planet, there's very few females. And so the men all go to school to learn how to be really good husbands, like culinary skills, like everything. And so then you, the females then get to pick their husband basically out of a lineup. They get to try them out <laughs> at a time. So she picks Theo because she thinks he's really hot. Well, Theo never gets picked because he has scars, but to her, they look more like tattoos. So she's very attracted to Theo. And then Theo is very apprehensive about why on earth is he, well, why on whatever planet he's on, I guess. Why is he getting picked? Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Four stars. Oh, I'm so happy. I liked it. I really liked that series. I've only read the first two or three. A new one just came out. Um, I haven't continued on, but I liked them. So yeah. it, was, yeah. it was good. It's not too weird. I mean, it's like yes. different world, obviously. Yes. But it's not. I mean, they're not described with like weird tentacle things, Jessica. They're very humanoid. Yeah, like they're they're very much like humans, and and that that was that's a great start for those who want to read Alien and are not ready for big blue guys yet. I don't know. Or tentacles. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What'd you read next? So the book that I read next um, is this one right here. It's Eclipse Ritual by Kate Rivenhall. I 
I, I really enjoyed this book. So this one is about obedience or B and then Ronan. This is supposed to be dystopian. We don't see a lot of the dystopian world. We will, I think, as the, the books progress because there's another one coming out where we go out into the world. But this is set in a cult-like situation. Um, Obedience's father is the run runner of their cult, the ruler of their cult. Um, and he kind of has the wool pulled over her eyes as to what kind of a man he is. But in this world, she is... Or the women have to remain pure until they're married. And the way that they're married is every seven years, there is a an eclipse. And when that happens, there's this ritual where the women who are ready for marriage um, stand, uh, they're put on top of this cliff. And the men who want to marry her have to fight each other to get to the top of the cliff to perform the the ritual to make them her, their help meet, which I, you know, it's called help mate, but she has this help mate. So that's what she's calling it in this world. And so... Bees waited forever for this to happen, and she's standing on the cliff, and they're blindfolded up there, so they don't know who's claiming them. They have to be quiet, and when this happens, like sex happens at that point, um, after some other things happen, sex happens at that point, and uh, she opens her eyes, or the blindfold comes off, and it's her brother who's claimed her as his wife. So... Um, I really, I gave it five stars. I loved it. Now I, I called you last night cause I saw that somebody that we loved on the, our channel didn't love it as much. And I understand why she wouldn't have loved it as much. It is a little bit more erotica, though it's not listed as erotica than it is romance, but there is a plot. There is stuff that's going on. And I think that more we get into this world, the more we're going to see and the more we're going to understand, but I really loved it. I loved it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. My next book is Tempting Promises by Corinne Michaels. This is book number three in the Whitlock family series. So we have Rowan, who is kind of described a little bit like a man whore, but just no strings attached type situation. And then we have Charlotte, who is Rowan's ex's sister. And they both are running dairy farms and they're competing for a milk contract. The big difference is Charlotte is about to lose her farm, which has been in her family for a long time. And so she's extremely stressed out and really needs this contract. So she is not happy when she knows that she's up for it against Rowan. And this has definitely got that enemies to lovers vibe because she does not like Rowan because of what happened with her sister. And Charlotte's like a workaholic basically trying to keep this farm alive. And her friend convinces her to go to a cabin with a bunch of other friends for like a weekend and go hiking and stuff like that. Well, Rowan is also invited in this mix. So they're all out hiking and doing things at this cabin. Well, Charlotte goes off on a hike by herself and gets hurt. And there's an ice storm and snow. And Rowan ends up rescuing her. But because of how bad the storm is, they end up, uh-oh, I you think the timer didn't go off. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they end up in a cabin together. And because of that enemies to lovers type feel, like they just have this chemistry and they get stuck there for like a week. So they decide, why not for just this week? just while we're stuck here. But it never ends like that. It, it does not. Ends. So yeah, I really <laughs> enjoyed this solid four stars. And I'm actually going to go back and read one of the previous books in the series because his niece is deaf. And I just loved his interactions with her. Like he signs with her. And then there's some times where he runs into Charlotte when he's with his niece. And Charlotte asks him, to translate for her and so he tells charlotte that his little niece i think her name was olivia is saying like uncle rowan's the best why are you so mean and like just funny things like that to him and mm -hmm. so it was, it was hilarious i loved it so i want to go back and read her dad's story because something happens in the previous book and he ribs his brother about being such a cliche. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. That was a long one minute book wreck. <laughs> it's okay. 
Um, okay. So my next book was an arc that I read from Lauren Beale. So let's talk about that one. <laughs> So this is Across State Lines. Like I said, it's by Lauren Beale. This will be out, I believe, on the 6th. I think is April 6th is when it's coming out. Um, so this is a part of her dark hitchhiker world. And this is about Aurora and Kane. And Kane is a trucker. He has you know his big rig and he drives across the country. And um, he also has um, DID, so Dissociative Identity Disorder. So he has multiple people in his head and because of trauma, right? So we have that going on. He's also a, a serial unaliver. He hates women and um, he'll pick up lot lizards and or what he calls lot lizards, um, the prostitutes that work the trucks and um, he'll, he hurts them. And then you have Aurora who has left college in California. She's from New York. She's considering going home to her parents. She hasn't had much contact with them because they're, they think if they find out she quit school, she's a failure, but she quit for specific reasons. And she has taken to, um, to selling her body to get from point A to point B. And so one day he sees Aurora and she's clean and she's young and she's, you know, got, got it going on. One of the altars actually sees her and decides that he wants her. And then, you know, she gets taken by these guys and they, he decides, so Kane decides that he can't quite kill her because the altars like her so much, but he can sell her. So then we go on a trucking journey to Texas so that he can sell her to these guys that are part of the, you know, that, that industry. But, you know, things transpire along the way. His altars really like her. So I gave it five stars. Loved it. If you like any of her hitchhiking books, you'll love it. It's just, she did a really good job with the DID. Really good job, in my opinion. And it's not a professional opinion. So, but yeah. Okay. So tell me about okay. your five book series. So <laughs> I wrote a five book series. So before I start my timer, I'll just say somebody had posted or uh, commented about this series saying that it was very, or they said the book and they said it was very angsty. So when I first grabbed it, I was like, Ooh, I've been wanting something angsty. I'm going to go grab it. When I first grabbed it, I just thought it was one book. And then I realized it had more books. So I'm going to start my timer now. So this is if I break by Portia Moore, the first book um, is about Lauren and Cal. And we open up with Lauren. She's mad at Cal. She's been drinking and they're fighting and they've only been married for a couple months. And Cal keeps having to leave to, for work and he leaves her. He doesn't always answer when he's gone and he tells her he can't because he's working. And she decides she's just had enough and she's going to leave him. I'm not going to go any further than that with what this book is about so jessica you can go ahead and switch back okay. um i'll turn my timer off because it give i don't want to give anything away i will say that the first book was extremely emotional i cried many times i felt it was very angsty this is i where loved I was it getting messages going you have to read this you have to read yes. this now i loved yeah. it it was a five star book going down as like a favorite it ends on a cliffhanger. So that makes it a little hard to fully judge it, though, because you have to read the next book. So that's where I was with the series. I read the next book and I was still all in. It was a novella. Still all in. Book two and three, because it's like a 1.5 is the novella. So book two and three are on there and three is listed as the conclusion. But it's not. There's a book four that you still have to read. And so somewhere between the full length book two and three, I started to lose interest. A lot of other stuff was happening and I just, I started to fall out of interest, you know, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I just kind of wanted to wrap it up. So <clears throat> the series went from being like a five, like, oh my God, this is going to be like my favorite for the year maybe, to a three and the last couple of books because I just felt like it kept dragging on. Now, I do not mind reading a five series book. Uh, the Off Balance series is a perfect example. I read 
and those are big books. Yeah. I read those in three days because I was obsessed with that couple. And it, even though a lot happens in that book too, I never felt like random things were just happening to continue driving the plot or the, you know, continue to produce books kind of. I just felt like this author has such an amazing book and she really, a, a second book could have wrapped it up. And a lot of the other stuff that happened, she could have just created new characters and made a whole another book kind of maybe. I don't know. It just drug on too much for me. Yeah. So I'm off the hook, right? I think so. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's, it kind of, I'm sad because the book, the first book was so good. Mm -hmm. So maybe other people have read the whole series and felt differently. I don't know, but that's just where, where I was with yeah. it. Understandably. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I, I mean, I, I get it. I get it. So. Okay, you want to talk about my last book? <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry, after we have that mournful pause. <laughs> That's okay. Mandy's mourning what the book could have been for her. It's okay. The first one was just so good. So yeah. Good. yeah. I did right. still rate it a five on Goodreads. And the then I rated book. the other books accordingly. Yeah. Okay. But, I think that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yes. To move on to something else. Okay. Last book. Yes. Here we go. Right, here we go. Okay. So I read A Law of Filet by Nova Kane. I hope I said that right. Um, but this is about Indy and Lux. So Indy is taken to this. So this is the circus themed. Um, this is really crooked. This is a circus themed story. Um, it's supposed to be a dark horror romance, and it was just it was interesting. So Indy is taken to this circus by her friends one night, and the circus by day is a circus. But by night, it is like a debauchery type situation where the circus people have all sorts of um, relations with the people from town and it's out in the open and anybody can join in, but they have all these different, you know, kinks and things that are, that are done and it can be, it's, it's interesting. Um, and so she's brought to this thing. She didn't know anything about it. She saw that her friends told her to look it up on TikTok as they're going out there. And that's where she sees Lex. He wears a clown mask, but she can see him from the neck down. She talks about how gorgeous he is. All you can do is see him from the neck down, honey. I don't understand that, but okay. Um, Lex was in a fire as a little boy and his face is really oh. burned. He's, he's got burn scars all over his body, but he sees her sitting on his little throne and he sees her cause he just sits and watches. And like, he's instantly like drawn to her like that. And then... And, and literally all of this happens over two nights. And I just, I really, I give it three stars. I really wanted to love it. I did, but we just, no, I mean, it could have been, it could have been a really great book had it been developed more, had it been, you know, there, and of course, because it's horror romance, you do have the, you know, I'm alive happening. There's things that are just kind of gross that are happening, which you expect that going into it. So I wouldn't knock it down for that because I knew what I was walking into. But I just, everybody in one of my reading groups was just going on and on about it. And I was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. So. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't work for me. For others, obviously it did. But. All right. So that's our reading week. <laughs> All right. We were kind of a mess all over the place this bit. week with our reading, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You Do you still have ARCs to read? Yes. How many? Are you two. still two ARCs? I just reading kind of... book this week slowed me down because, like I've said before, when I read, when I'm beta reading, I have to read slower because mm -hmm. I pay attention to a lot of things. And so it slows me down with the reading. Um because it took me two days to finish a 300 page book this week because I was doing that very slowly with Pam. So, mm -hmm. and then I have to pause and message her and, you know, back and forth. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I've got two more arcs that I need to have done um, by Tuesday. I think we're fine. We're good. Do you want to tell what those are or no? One is the new Jagger Cole book. Okay. Um, which is the third in his series. I can't remember what that is. And then the other one is the Lola Knight book that I had said. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Mine are the author's Lola Knight. And I just thought. Possessive. 
Daisy Jane's new book that was on my TBR for this yeah. month where the girl sounds like she's the stalker. So I am so excited to read that. So I will be talking about that next mm -hmm. week on One Minute Book Rex. Yeah. So we have three arcs. That, that'll be yes. good. Yes. So lots of good books coming for next week. Very so. Yeah. All right. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, comment, tell us all the bookish things below. And also like, like the video, please. We love it when you do that. So thank you. <laughs> we really appreciate you guys, our subscribers. Make sure you check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.